Hi, my name is George at PaintworkProductions.com. For today's tutorial, we're going to touch base on some basic glazing techniques. We'll go over a little bit about glazing, uh, how I use glazing on my reproductions, and which stems over into how I use it in my originals. As, uh, as we're learning as part of these courses, these courses aren't just about painting reproductions or how somebody painted what or anything like that. These courses are more about learning the techniques used by the masters or possibly by the masters or new techniques to really improve your own style. So what you want to do is learn these different types of techniques and when you find a painting that you want to do, it gives you an idea of how you can achieve those same kind of results. Glazing is an important one, especially for oil painters. Uh, for acrylic, you can't really do glazing. For watercolors, you can. Uh, the reason for acrylic is acrylic is more of, when you think of it, think of sheets of plastic blending on top of each other as to how acrylics get their feel, but, but oil is more a bonding agent where they bond together in the paints. And what I've done here is I've attached a screenshot. Now, the screenshot I did in Photoshop real quick to show you a basic example of a glaze. So when you think of glazing, think of looking through a tinted window and another tinted window behind it and another tinted window behind it. And through each glass window that you're looking through that's tinted, it's going to get darker. But also, too, if you take a, you know, if you take a red tint and you put a yellow tint in front of it, it's going to appear almost orange. Uh, in the dark, and of course, the more reds you put, it become brighter. And then, of course, if we do complementary colors right next to it, it really makes it stand out. Well, the masters knew this, and they knew they can develop tones, half tones, and, and things like that just by the way they glazed certain things. So, glazing is a lot more than you would see. Like, if you look at the, the image I've included right here, if you see the blue, like on her dress, on her shoulder, that's just one image done at about, it's saturated with blue about, oh, maybe 10%, and it shows you what a difference it makes. So if you're doing the Griselle image, it shows you the kind of how, how big of a difference it makes. And if you look at the three blocks, that's using two reds and an orange and a yellow to form an orange block in the center. So that gives you some basic ideas. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how that glazing can really impact the painting. So we're going to do that using, again, the Da Vinci, the lady with the ermine. So what I'm doing here is I've taken some, some glazing mixture, which is right here. I like the blending and glazing medium by, by Windsor Newton. I've mixed my own. It's basic, you know, it's, it's pretty basic to mix. You can find recipes, but I seem to really like this one and it, and it works fine. Uh, you don't want to blend it down to next to nothing. And what we're doing today is today we're doing, we're going to do transparent colors. So there's transparent, there's semi-transparent, and there's not transparent. Example would be white. But we do glazing with white when we do scumbling, like to get a cloudy effect like uh, we're doing on the Kensit reproduction of Lake George. Okay, uh, skin, we'll do scumbling in skin tones and skin and flesh colors. We'll do that like if you're following the Bergerol reproduction. Uh, of the storybook. Her face is 90% glazing, which is why I spend such a great deal of time when I'm going over uh, a Griselle, because once if we get a really good Griselle, the black and white, it really makes glazing fun and makes it a lot simpler to work with. So what I'm doing here is I've taken some yellow, a little brown, mixed it a little darker, and if you notice, I'm not paying any attention to the folds in the fabric of her sleeve. I'm just painting the details in. I'm painting it flat over, but it almost looks like it's stamped on top. It isn't blended into the fabric. You know, if we were to do that, we'd have to use the reds and mix a whole bunch of different colors in there and have it so it follows the folds and so it's perfect. Well, glazing lets you do that too. It can kind of like, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to show you how once I put these details in. And I wanted to leave in some of the mistakes too and show you that sometimes, you know, it could be pretty tough on this one. Like example, I didn't want to flip the painting over here. So I'm trying to paint the details underneath the sleeve. Uh, painting them on the top was easy, but I had to think upside down to get it on the next part. So it was kind of driving me crazy, but it was more fun than anything. So it's just to see if I can do it. Plus, keep in mind, about 90% of it's going to be covered up anyway. But I also want to make that point clear is that uh, when you are using glazes and when you are using paints like this, I'm actually painting the area that's going to be covered up. Uh, the reason why we do that, we just don't paint it black because we're getting away from looking like a photograph. We want it to look like a painting. And you'll see this a lot in uh, like uh, Rembrandt's 
And if you look at some Rembrandt paintings, especially ones like um, like a really evident, like the watch was really, really big paintings, just a whole bunch of people that are coming out of the darkness into the light. He still painted them. And then he glazed, then he glazed over top of them. And he covered over top of them, glazed them almost completely out of the picture. But if you look real hard, you can still see them there. Our eyes pick that up. Now, if he was to just paint it black in the background, kind of like the Da Vinci did here for the lady in your mind, it really just pushes one thing forward and doesn't really recede. But we'll learn in different paintings how we, we push stuff forward and we, we force stuff to go back and bring stuff forward. Okay, as I'm finishing the details up on a sleeve, I'm gonna show you on her undersleeve that's holding the ermine, but I'm gonna show you how important this sleeve is right here because this is our almost our farthest forward object in the painting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish up the detail and we're gonna flip over and now we're gonna say this takes about two, three days to dry. Okay, this is exactly what we want. It's taken a few days to dry. I'm taking some black glaze, okay? So it's barely any on my brush. Now even my brushes, I only use cheap brushes. Once they're soft, once they start to stiffen up, I cut them up as scumbling brushes or I throw them away. But I mean, this is like two bucks for a pack of these. They work perfect. The softer the brush, the better. And I blend it in. So you see me blending that black into it. Because when we look at the original, that, that detailing is almost gone. It's almost transparent there. For me to get that effect with paint, I would have to mix all different kinds of yellows and dark yellows and try and do that, where this is just a simplified way, but the effect comes out when done right. It's beautiful. Now with glazing, you don't want to try and cover too much at once. It only takes about a day for your glazing to dry. So if it needs multiple coats, each coat is going to get darker and darker. You just add it as you go. So I wanted to add black into this part here. Now let's take a look at the sleeve. So this is a couple days after I painted the detail, so now it's dry. So what we want to do is we want the sleeve to appear, those details to fall into the sleeve. So I'm going to be blending the highlighted areas where a little red where it's brighter and a little dark where it's darker. And you'll see the, all of a sudden the details start to pull back and fall into the material. That's what I'm talking about like right here, is that you'll see as I'm scumbling the whole thing in red, scumbling is just painting, I'm just painting the glaze in, and I'm just doing it in a red. And I, I'll pre-mix some glazes, especially if I'm going to use a lot for this painting. Put them in there and mix them, and you're really mixing them like a 1 to 10 ratio. Now I'm adding the black. So I'm adding the black in the folds, and now you can see it's starting to look like it's folded in. See, so you're starting to get this effect that you can, you can really only get it with glazing or drive yourself trying, crazy trying to mix all those different little colors and stuff like that. Every painting I've done here is only using three tubes of three, co of three colors of paint. It's just blue, blue, red, brown, yellow. That's it, and white. Black, I only use black uh, when I'm glazing or when I'm doing a grisel. Uh, but 99% of the time, I'm, any kind of landscape, I don't use any black. Uh, but I'm glazing in the background. So you'll see me on some of my paintings as something as simple as doing a landscape uh, as a commission work. I'm still going to use glazing. I'm going to glaze in the backgrounds. And I'll show you that later too. So what I'm doing now is I'm just, I've glazed it in. You see how that sleeve is now starting to stand out? So what I want to do now is I want to darken in the shadow areas. These are the areas under the hand and in the lower part of the painting. I want them to disappear like I was talking about earlier. So when we look at the original, you can barely make out the details on her bottom hand right here. So what I'm doing is I'm going to covering, I'm covering a little black glaze and wiping it out. Okay, and I'm wiping out all the areas and darkening it in. Okay, so I'm using that, that thin transparent layer of black to darken it. Now, if I need it to be even more darker, I would do it two, three times. I just come back when it dries and hit it again, come back dry and hit it again. But you keep it in the back of your mind. And if you're watching my videos on the Griselle part, I can't stress if you're reading the details or in the description, that when you're doing a Griselle, you want to always concentrate that you're always doing it a little bit lighter than normal. Because when we start adding glazing to it, it's going to darken the whole image, which is fine. But as you can see here, I'm darkening in the shade and I'm, I'm push, pushing the Ermine's body back into under her arm and using the shadow of her arm, I'm capturing with glaze. I didn't have to capture it with the paint. So I painted the whole Ermine with the detail, go over it with the glazing, and it did exactly what I wanted it to do. It starts receding it into the background without having to worry about painting it too much. So as I do the black right here, you can see I'm just adding a little more black, a little more black, and I'll probably stop here. I don't think I'll need to recede it any farther. I'm doing a little thicker right here. 
I'll blend it forward. You'll see me blend with my, you know, with my fingers. You'll see me blend with just about everything, touching up different areas. Uh, pull, pull it all forward. By pulling it forward, I mean I'm dragging the paint forward thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. You see me pull forward is like a lot of shading we've always done where it goes to little points, darker and goes out. You see me take the paper towel, really light. I make a ball with the paper towel and barely touching it. Barely just blending it in. I'll use fingertips, paper towels, Q-tips, whatever I have at my disposal. But I am working fast. This is sped up uh, two times, but it's still, I do work fast working with glaze. Uh, but you'll also find for other glazing, when we want different effects too, and you use scumbling, we can use glazing as a wet on wet technique. Okay, so, and I'll show you that in a minute. But for right now, I'm gonna to touch some of those dark areas in the fold. Now her sleeve, which would be on, on this side, that point sleeve, that point coming down, you'll see me as soon as I'm done touching this area with the darker, I'm gonna to touch, I'm gonna to hit that part again. This has probably been glazed about 15 times. And I'm about ready to put the 16th one on it before I wrap it up. So I'm doing a little darker on top to take out that blending, to take out that detailing so it kind of recedes it in the back. Now what I want to do is on the other side of her shirt where that detail still looks like it's stamped, which is running along her shoulder right here, I want to blend that in with red now. And what I want to do is because I want that to fall into the background too. Not with black, but with red because when we look at the image itself, there's still some red in there. So you see me start pulling it right through. And if you notice, it's, it's really hard to, I mean, you really gotta try to mess it up. And if you do mess it up, you can wipe it out. We're only working very thin layers at a time. So I'm only working a very thin. So I'm not trying to lose all the detail, just break it up so it doesn't look like it's stamped on top of it is what I'm going for. So I'll darken in the darker shadowed areas. I'll pull it through. I, I just want everything to blend. So glazing is wonderful at taking a whole bunch of different stuff at the end and bringing it all together into one finished painting, including details and everything and softening up everything and doing a receding effect. So now I'm gonna hit it with some more red. I'm gonna touch up that sleeve. And I am pretty happy with the way the sleeve come out. So I'm, I'm gonna stick with that sleeve like that for right now. So I painted some more of the red. And it seems pretty simple. But it took a long time to get to this phase, but it's all worth it. It's worth it when you finish out that Grisel and you start using these blending and you start using these glazing colors. It opens up a whole new world of painting for you and a whole different way in your techniques. And you'll find that it doesn't matter what kind of painting you're doing, you'll find, okay, I can glaze in here. So here's what I was talking about, about the, the working in this, this creased area. So what I'm doing is I'm just glazing the whole thing. I'm not coloring in anything. I'm just coloring the whole triangle. That's it. Even I may reinforce the darks a little bit. And I'm going to show you when I do the top part of her shoulder, which is the shoulder over here, I guess. Don't face me the other way. The blue right here. I'm going to show you how I use the blue glaze. And I do some scumbling with my finger to get the last effect on that. So as I'm still pulling that red through everywhere, what I want to do next is I want to kind of get it ready. So I've got my blue. That gives it a nice finished satiny look. And that's that's what you, and in case you've ever wondered, looking at these, these classical pieces, and you see like a, a good example is if you look up Vermeer, the woman with the red hat. Okay, that's done in yellows and then uh, reds over top of it to give it that real vibrant red. Like here, I'm, I'm adding the yellow. Now, an interesting thing I'm doing here, and I'm doing it on purpose, is there is some red glaze inside that followed through that went into the yellow. I didn't know to take it off. I left it in there because as I had that yellow real light, it almost gives a subtle reflection of the red in the yellow. Little things like that, a lot of people won't notice or you won't notice on purpose, but it's little things like that that go a long way. So I'm gonna touch that part up here and that's ready. Now I'm gonna get ready for the blue. So with the blue, I'm gonna do the darker areas. As I do the darker areas, I'm gonna pull it forward. As you see right here, I'm gonna pull it forward away um, from the folds out, okay? And I'm just reinforcing it real quick, adding just some of the darker glaze. And this is just the blue, that's all it is, just the dark blue. If I wanna hit it with a little more black, I can. Then I'm gonna cover the whole thing. Now, on this side, if you look at the original, it's kinda grainy and, and brushy. That's the same effect I'm going for, so I'm not trying to cover the whole thing. I'm just emphasizing the dark areas and leaving streaks and leaving stuff like that the way he did. Now, for this area, 
just like doing wet on wet. I'm doing the whole thing. I'm getting it nice and wet. You see how it really starts popping that blue out? But I want that white. So you see now is where I'll bring in the finger. Now I'm going to take my finger. I'm going to touch that white that's mixed in that blue paint right there. Right there. And I'm going to kind of scumble it in. Say so a little bit at a time. I use my finger. It's really hard to do that with a brush. But when you do it with a finger, it looks like you've spent hours trying to touch this area up. So this is just one of the sittings as I get toward the end of wrapping up this painting. There's not much more left on this one for me. I mean, of course, these paintings, you can sit here and keep working on them for months and months and months and get as perfect as you can. Uh, but this one was a fun one from start to finish. And, you know, I really do hope you're enjoying this. If you are enjoying these videos, you know, make sure you, 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 know, you share them, send them to a friend. Make sure you, you know, subscribe. Or if you have any questions, please let me know. If you'd like to see some other videos, I'd be happy to share them. Uh, if you have any you know, questions, just put them down in the comments. And if you like something or you don't like something or you're just curious about something, just feel free, feel free, please let me know. I've got some new and exciting and really some wonderful projects coming up for the first of the year. So I hope to talk to you or see you soon. And I want to thank you for joining. Hey, and let's keep sharing this. Share this as much as we can. We want to keep these classes free. I want to keep them online and keep more and more stuff adding for you. So thank you. Have a good day. This is George of Paintman Productions. Goodbye.